Stem cells can be obtained from many sources, but not all stem cells are equal. Some stem cells are said to be pluripotent, that is, they have the ability to develop into many different cell types of the body. Others are more restricted in the types of cells they can become. Embryonic stem cells, the most pluripotent of all stem cells, are derived from embryos generated by in vitro fertilization. When fertilization is successful, the sperm head bearing the nucleus enters the egg, while the tail is left behind. The fertilized egg divides first into two cells, then into four, and so on. By about five days after fertilization, a multicellular ball of cells known as a blastocyst is formed. Looking inside the blastocyst, we can see that it's a hollow ball made up of two cell types. An outer layer called the trophoblast eventually forms the placenta. An inner cluster of cells known as the inner cell mass becomes the embryo. The inner cell mass consists of embryonic stem cells. It's possible to pick up these embryonic stem cells with a pipette and transfer them to a petri dish for culturing. The colonies of cells that result can be further propagated by transferring them to new petri dishes. Under appropriate culture conditions, these embryonic stem cells divide or self-renew and the cell mass grows. By adding the appropriate signaling molecules, Cells can also be coaxed into differentiating into a particular specialized cell type. Groups of cells may develop properties of mature bone cells or of pancreatic cells. Others develop into muscle cells that can contract and still others into nerve cells. The goal of cell replacement therapy is to use these cells for transplantation to replace tissues and to restore function. Because they have the potential to become such a wide variety of specialized cells, embryonic stem cells are described as pluripotent. Pluripotency is one of two key features of embryonic stem cells. The second key feature of embryonic stem cells is their ability to self-renew indefinitely while retaining their undifferentiated pluripotent state. Small groups of cells are placed in petri dishes to divide. Cells from a single petri dish can seed many petri dishes. In this way, unlimited numbers of undifferentiated pluripotent stem cells can be produced. When transplanting ES cells derived from embryos obtained by in vitro fertilization, the genetic background of the ES cells in the dish will be different from the genetic background of the patient. Therefore, the tissues and organs derived from these cells will also have a different genetic background from the patient, and this can lead to rejection of the transplanted tissues. The technique of somatic cell nuclear transfer, or SCNT, might eliminate this problem, allowing for the generation of replacement cells that have the same genetic makeup as a patient. In somatic cell nuclear transfer, the nucleus of the egg is removed, and with it, the genetic material of the donor. Next, a biopsy is taken from the patient, for example, skin cells, and the nucleus from one of these cells, bearing the patient's genetic material, is transferred into the empty egg. Following activation, the same sequence of events shown earlier takes place in a culture dish, ending up with ES cells, except that the ES cells have the same genetic background as that of the patient. In the same way, Patient-specific ES cell lines may someday be produced and used to generate cells and tissues for transplantation. The point is that these cells, tissues, and organs will be genetically compatible with the patient and will not be rejected. In addition to generating cells for tissue and transplantation, it is hoped that by using ES cells derived from patients with known genetic defects related to ALS, Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's, researchers will be able to develop and test drugs that might prove valuable in the treatment of the disease.